All right, what's going on, y'all? Sorry for the, the rough look. I actually need, I'm about to get ready and shave in a bit because I'm about to actually go out of town. Uh, I am filming a wedding in Texas. Uh, I'm going to bring my GoPro, well, I'm sorry, my DJI action, whatever you call it. I'm going to bring that with me uh, just so I can see if I can get some BTS for y'all. But typically, I'm a little bit too busy, so don't count on that. But I finally want to show you all the gear that I bring with me uh, when I do travel out of town. Um, cause you only bring one check bag and I'm gonna show you like the carrying case that I bring and all that. So I'm not going to go like in super, super depth detail about what everything does, why I got it. I'm going to show you what it is, give like a little brief synopsis of it. Uh, so you can kind of keep this video short and sweet, but, uh, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to start with is my B-Cam, which is what I'm filming on right now. And the lens that, the lens that I use along with the mic. So it's going to be the Deity D4, no, the Deity D4 Pro, the Deity Pro, one of those, I'll link it. Um, the Tamron 1728, and then I'm filming this on the uh, Sony A7C. This is my B cam, this is how typically it look. And then I'm gonna show you the tripod that I use as well, one of the tripods that is. Um, so, boom. All right, so this is my Manfrotto tripod, as you all can see. Um, this is the Manfrotto 055. I'll make sure I link this down in the description as well, too. Um, but I like this because it gets super high, and then, you know, it's just a very sturdy tripod. But I have another one that I use, but the, it's, it's, it's not as good as this, nor does it get as high. And then here is what I stick my uh, A7C on with the Ulanzi, I think it's called. Ulanzi little clip. I'll make sure I link that down in the description as well, too. Um, but it's just easy for me just to... See what I'm saying? Hands free now. So, uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna use this tripod so I can show you the rest of the gear and the bags that I use. Uh, but here's here's the gear in the case. So, but let's get into it. So first, we're gonna start off with the Tamron 70 to 180 fire lens. This is great for ceremony shots. Um, that's pretty much what I use it for. Just literally just ceremony shots. So Tamron 7180 dope lens to have. Next, we're gonna go with these, this little battery charger here. Now this little battery charger, I, I, I keep this with me. I'm not bringing any of my actual chargers with me on this trip because it's just a one day trip to Texas, but uh, I keep this with me just in case batteries do get low, but I do have five Sony batteries that I take with me at all times. So um, this charges up and it takes USB-C or micro USB. Next, we're gonna go with the Sony a7S III. Uh, I, might use this to, I might use this as a thumbnail. So let me go ahead and get this joint right. So here's the Sony a7S III. Um, obviously, you all know what this is. This is my baby, my pride and joy. Uh, as you all can see, I got like a little clip right there. That's because um, it fits my next accessory when I'm using a gimbal, which is gonna be the Deity D4 Duo. This is a little mic here. I took the little other little wind muff off of it because it was hitting, the, hitting my little flip screen on the A7S III. But this mic here, it, it works great if you just need some good scratch audio. I don't even say scratch audio. Like, it, there's been time like this audio has saved me. So I always keep a mic on my camera when I'm shooting any type of weddings. And just for those wondering, um, as you can see, I have a, a dual plate or like a Manfrotto uh, mount style plate on this camera here. If you haven't seen the video I discussed, like what I use to shoot weddings with, uh, I'll link that somewhere here. But uh, I have this here because I got tired of the, the original Ronin, the RS2 plate always moving when I took it off or something like that. Or like when I took my camera off the gimbal, this here got two screws. It like, it's, it's super sturdy, it's not going nowhere. Next, finish off that Holy Trinity. We got the Tamron 28 to 75. Again, this is the lens that primarily stays on my camera. If I'm shooting by myself, um, like I am this this uh, for this one here, this is the lens that primarily stays on my camera because it's so versatile. It's a full frame, you know, camera, so I get enough bokeh, and you know, it complements the 17 to 28, the 70 to 180. You know, the Holy Trinity, baby. You know what it is. Next, we're gonna get into the 55. Now, I would typically use the 55 for. Uh, like if I'm shooting my boy Sean Miles, if I would I would be on a 55 f 1.8. I mean great bokeh. It looks phenomenal. I would be on his lens and he would be like on a 16 or 35, and we would just run the wide tight scenario. So um, I love this lens. If I'm shooting with him, this is the lens that I'm standing on pretty much the entire shoot. Um, same thing here. This is a the 35 f 1.8. I bring this with me, so I bring a 35 and 55 just in case if it gets like too dark and I want to kick the ISO up too much on A7S3 because there are definitely situations where you don't want to like even though the A7S3 is great in low light, um, you don't always want to just rely on that um, for clean shots. You know what I mean? So sometimes you just want to like you know a very um, fast prime lens and a 35 and a 55 the best combo I would you know recommend. Next, we have the Mavic Air 2. I still use this drone now. What's funny is I was gonna get the Mavic Air 2S, but as many videos I've seen that like the, the image quality wasn't that much better than like this here, than, than that Mavic Air 2. So uh, I'm actually gonna stick with the Mavic Air 2 for a while until I feel the need to actually upgrade it. And plus I don't, I, I use my drone, um, but it's not like I need a 10-bit. 
Um, you know, when I'm primarily flying in the daytime, this this drone gets the job done and, you know, it still works. So, like, we rocking with it. So then we have the remote controller. Then we have extra batteries and Sony batteries I put up top. Now, this case that you're looking at here, this is not a Pelican case. Like, no, neither, neither is this Instar here. This Instar I actually bought separately for the... Apache 5800. Now the Apache 5800, like I love this case because it is like carry on ready. Um, like it can fit into any carry on apartments. Anytime they say like, oh, well, we don't know if it's going to fit. Yes, it's going to fit. It fits like perfectly. Um, and it has wheels. You can't beat that. Now, even though I said I'm going to show you all just like the gear that I primarily use, um, this here is like my little filter case. Now I'm not bringing this with me this time. I'm going to crank the shutter, but here you will find all my filters. Right, so we have a variable ND, a polarizer, uh, some specialty filters, like with the, to do some like some special, uh, you know, like that special type of look. We got like the anamorphic one, so you can put the lines, the lines and the frames. Um, then we have like two pro mist filters, which is gonna be the one, a quarter, and then a half, uh, half pro mist filters. Um, so yeah, that's, love the way it fits all my filters in here. This is a Pro Tactic 450 Mark II, but I'm not bringing this one because honestly, when it comes to travel, it kind of sucks, right? It's only really good for, um, like if you obviously like if you're a solo shooter, then you can get like a lot of stuff in here. Like it works phenomenal in that regard. But if you're trying to like to travel with it, um, I don't think this is the best bag to travel with. So I have another low pro bag. Now this is the low pro. This is the low pro. Which one is this one? This is low, the low pro BP two fifty. Um, like. When it comes to travel, like this, this bag checks the boxes. So let me, let me show you why. First thing, first you're gonna notice, you're gonna notice a little zipper here. This is where I'm gonna keep. One SD cards, right? Got a few of these joints here. A um, couple of, just in case, like I, I never have to really switch SD cards like when I'm on a wedding because I got two 256 gigabytes in my camera and I do a record, right? So I never typically have to even switch out SD cards, but again, you never know. I'm one of those packs and you never know. I bring an SD card reader with me just in case. In this case, I have to transfer the footage to the photographer that I'm shooting for. So uh, I got a pro grade SD card reader. And then this is the mounting plate for my RS2, right? So as you can see, it's a Manfrotto style plate here. Uh, the small red extended extended joint. So yeah, definitely keep this with me at all the time. This is a um, battery pack, 20,000 milliamp hours. If I need to charge my A7S III while I'm moving around, um, this is the this is the, the thing that I will use. So 20,000 milliamp hours. Um, it supports like uh, I don't know if it supports quick charge. I got this thing a long go a, lot, a long time ago, but it has USB C or micro USB charging. It has a flashlight on if you double tap the power button. See little flashlight man. And it has a USB 3 and the USB C and a regular, and then two USB like 2.0 slots. So dope. This is why I love this bag because it has so many pockets. Um, next, we're going to go into this portion here, right? RS2. Um, well, the one that I had pieces to it anyway. <laughs> this is the actual gimbal itself. Um, Yes, that was my gimbal that just dropped. You saw that. Okay. Battery to it. Keep that in there as well. And here you will find the um, Rode Wireless Go 2. Um, I use this on every wedding. I mean, listen, you can't get better than this for when you're trying to record audio on a groom or groomsman. Um, well, groom. <laughs> um, it gets the job done. Like, that's the best I got for you. Like, it, it definitely gets the job done. And before I leave off on this, the reason why this thing is so dope because you actually have a backup audio. So you have a 32-bit audio float um, like this recording directly to the, 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 the unit itself. So if anything was ever happened, like, you know, the audio cut off in your camera, whatever the case is, I mean, I don't even have to plug it into my camera. I typically just use these things, uh, just to get the audio for backup. And if, if I have a loose connection or anything like that, I don't have to worry about it because it has onboard storage on the actual unit itself. Let's go into the back zipper here. Here, we're going to find my, my M1, uh, M1 MacBook Pro. Uh, I will be upgrading to the uh, the M1 Max at some point, but you know, wedding season is like, again, it's coming to a slowdown, so there's no point for me getting it now, and this still perfectly, you know, gets the job done. Um, as you can see, I got like this little Velcro strap here when I want to snap on my uh, two terabyte sand disc, put Velcro on that joint, I got to worry about it moving. 
Um, but yeah, this is the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. And it's only 256 too. Like I didn't, you know, I'm always using um, SSDs. So it really was no point of me buying uh, something with bigger storage. Plus I got that joint for a steal. Like I got that joint for under under a thousand dollars. So yeah. And we're getting down to this little last portion here. Now, because you're on a plan, you can't travel with batteries like in your check bag. So what I'll do is for my lights, um, I will put um, my batteries in here. This is obviously some extra pieces to the RS2. Like I'm gonna use like the dual, not dual handles, but the back handle. I use small rig gear. So, and then this is the tripod legs for the actual gimbal itself. All right, we got one more piece of gear to look at and then we're closing it out. Now this bag here, please forgive it for how trash it looks right now, but this is a Samsonite bag. I'll link this down in the description below. Um, as you can see, it's kind of beat up, but for a travel bag, <laughs> he gets the job done. Here's my second tripod, man, for the 290 light. Again, this is for the B angle, and I usually put this on the groom because the groom angle, on B Richard, the groom angle typically is not as important as the bride angle, so I typically won't even, you know, stress that one too much. Also, you will see like tripod legs, I mean, light stand legs, you know, obviously, I mean, I don't really think I need to take that out of the bag, but you can see. Uh, now this is important. Now this is the newer 480 lights. Now I am going to upgrade these some just a little bit better. Um, I bought these third part, like third, you know, second hand. So, but they get the job done. Like they're bright. They got barn doors. So you want to focus the light. But if you want to step up your wedding game or your wedding, like, you know, your, um, especially reception, you need to be using lights. Do not depend on just your A7S3 because it could do well in low light. I learned that lesson. Shout out to M2 Way Photography for, you know what I'm saying, putting me on game. But do not rely on your camera's low light ability to get clean shots. Use lights. If you're professional, you should be using lights in the first place. And I have two of these. Now, even though I use the Road Riders Go 2, I always have a backup mic because you never know. So I use a Tascam 10R DL. Um, I mean, listen. You just can't beat this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I keep this a backup because you just, you never know when you need to throw it on somebody, something like that, so. Uh, or if you just, you know, let's just say if your road riders go twos down on you and you got something that's battery powered, always have backups, always have backups. Now, we have two of these. Now, then you wonder like, well, Sean, why do you have two of these joints? I'm gonna explain why. So, as soon as it focus. Now, as you can see, um, I'm gonna be with you. If I had to rely on good, clean audio, I'm gonna go with this one right over this one all the wedding filmmakers that i watched town tell me like yo get this one this is the best one for you to get you want clean crispy audio but they didn't tell you that sometimes the audio levels can be too hot and you could just like literally ruin audio um that you would get coming from those speakers especially if you plug directly in or if the dj booth stuff is coming in too hot like i would not rely on this for clean audio i mean if you you you, you would literally have to manually set it right uh set the audio level so do not rely on auto record level with this you would get terrible audio you would literally have to set your audio record audio level down to like level one or two to get clean audio versus this here right because it's coming in at a line level um this thing is like a literally plug and play you hit record you don't have to worry about nothing and instead of using XLR, you got to use like a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack or 3.5 millimeter uh, input. So the audio you're going to get through this is going to be like just way easier. You don't have to worry about it. Um, the batteries last way longer than this here. Like it's not even close. Um, but you and you can also plug this in. That's why I used to keep a power bank with me too. In this case, if I run out of batteries, I can use a power bank to charge this up uh, or keep this charged and I have to worry about it. This here, you actually got to use a proprietary cable and it's just like, it's just stupid. Y'all like this. This is a backup, so I'll plug this into the speaker and I set the levels down to like all the way down to one, but this is my main go-to for audio. So if you are a wedding filmmaker and you're just starting out, grab this one first, grab this later for backup, or hell, just grab two of these. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even tell you to get this one, to be honest. Um, Y'all, please forgive me. I almost forgot the most important thing when it comes to audio, which is the cables. Here we have a... Um, XLR cable. This is six foot just because I need to now the thing is if you if you don't have a DJ box to plug into the H4N does come in handy But you know, that's kind of like a rare occasion, but um, I have a, a, a This is actually no. this is this is, is this six foot and I think it's a little bit longer than that um, But I got this super long cable just in case I need to like, you know, I need some length <laughs> so super long cable XLR cable here This here is this is what I'll use for the H1N um, you got a quarter to a 3.5 millimeter, right? So, um, yeah, this is what I primarily use when I'm getting audio on the H1N. And it's pretty lengthy too. And again, just in case you had those situations where 
Um, you know, they don't have, you know, I have all the different cables that go to DJ boxes, right? So I got 3.5 millimeter to XLR. I got quarter just in case I can't plug up to the H1N to um, the old RCA joints here, right? I also got the three point. I also got uh, RCA again to the 3.5 millimeter. Now, believe it or not, these are actually pretty common. So if you, you know, you might want to grab these for real, for real, because there's definitely been times I went to a DJ box and they didn't have none of those connections. They had the old joints and I had to use these. So these have definitely come in handy have every single cable that you can think of when it comes to DJ boxes because you never know what kind of board they have and sometimes you actually run into DJs who hell don't know what to plug into so and then again more cables uh, quarters to XL XLR so again cables on cables on cables and then this is what I use to charge the H4N up this is actually from my old PlayStation home I don't know why I still had it but it works with the H4N so can't complain um, one last thing I almost forgot is going to be my trusty little pocket light. Now, this little digital photo light, I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, but as you can see, I actually number them because I have three of these. So if I need to charge one up or something like that, I can, you know, remember which one needs to be charged. But if you want like some cool ring shots or sometimes you just in a dark spot, you need to put out your light to go ahead and light that bright up. This joint here comes in handy. Let us light. Uh, but yeah, other than that, man, that's that's it. Like that is all that I travel with when I do weddings. Like, I was, um, not only like out of the out of the state, um, but also when I actually shoot weddings, I have a card and everything like that too. But this is the gear that I use. If you need any in depth reviews on any of this gear that I talked about or mentioned, please comment down below and I got you. Um, if you have any other questions about the gear that I use, let me know and, and you know I answer down in the comment section below. But other than that, uh, we out. This is.